I have a little problem. You must be out of your mind. Call 473 104.5. I almost didn't do it. I thought, is this in bad taste? But you know what? I went for it. I went for it, and I am so glad I did. What's the worst that could happen? Dirty Work Wednesday on the air at 473 104.5. Hi, who's this? Uh, this is Amy. Hey, Amy, what can we do for you on this Dirty Work Wednesday? So I've been worried for a while now that my husband has been having an affair. Oh, yikes. Okay. Um, Well, let's start with your husband's name. It's Paul. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear you're going through all this. And you said you you think you've known this for a while? Yeah. He started working these late nights, usually on Thursdays and Fridays. And he would come home late. Sometimes if I was awake, I'd kiss him goodnight. And I could tell he was drinking, you know. Of course, he's been acting a lot different lately. Sometimes he's in a really good mood. And other times he's in bad moods. I don't know. He just seems like he's hiding something from me. The old uh, women's mm-hmm. intuition, which, by the way, has yeah. been proven right <laughs> mo- on more than one occasion mm-hmm. on this show. Let me ask you this. H- has he been more secret with his phone? Like, has he recently put a password lock on it? Does he get texts that he won't show you? Does he um, Does he leave the room when he takes a phone call? I-, I think he's always had that lock thing on his phone. But, no, he hasn't gotten weird texts or anything like that. Okay. Have you gotten to take a look through his phone at all? Like, checking through his text messages or his emails? No, not really. He's never really on his phone when he's at home. It's just the sudden late night work hours that makes me wonder. Like last Friday, we were supposed to order Chinese food and watch A Star is Born. And I was so excited. And we even talked about it at lunch that day. And then around dinner time, he texted me that he's going to be stuck working late again. Okay. Where did you say he works? He's an account supervisor for Cat One. Oh, wow. Okay, so he probably works in one of those big buildings with, like, 500 people then. Yes, he yeah. does. Okay, so how about this? Let's see if he was really stuck at work on Friday night or if that was his lie to cover up where he really was. Okay, let's let, let's just start with that. Okay. Okay, um, so now we, here's the thing that stinks. We can't do the whole um, we're calling from Bank of America fraud department thing if he works for Cat one, can we? Yeah, I mean, I think he would probably know what those calls actually sound like, so I'm not sure I would <laughs> risk it. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Amy, um, with his phone, does he have an iPhone by any chance? No, it's a Galaxy, okay. and his work pays for it. And his work pays for it. Okay, oh, dang. Okay, we, we may have to do this the old-fashioned way. Um, okay, how about this? Do you um, do you know what his boss's name is? Like, not the CEO of the company or anything, but like his immediate supervisor? Uh, yeah, it's Joe Hodge. Okay, great. That'll help. So um, so stand by, Amy. We're going to need Paul's number from you, and then we will call him when we come back. Okay. Hello? Hi, Paul K- please? This is Paul. Hey, Paul. This is uh, Tim Mosley calling from Loss Prevention. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. So, listen, I don't know if Joe Hodge had told you guys in your department yet, but we had a break-in at the office on Friday night. Nothing serious. Um, a few computers and some other equipment was stolen. So, I'm handling the investigation on our end to kind of assist the police because they're convinced whoever took this stuff was probably an employee here. I guess they didn't find any windows smashed or anything, so they're pretty sure it was an inside job. Oh, wow. Yeah, nobody told us anything about that. Yeah, I think they're trying to keep it kind of quiet. So anyways, the reason I'm calling is because I got a list of people here, and I'm basically like crossing them off the list if they weren't in the building Friday night. And I'm assuming you probably weren't here on Friday night, like after 6 p.m., were you? No, I was long gone at that point. Okay, do you remember where you were on Friday night? I mean, I, I, I realize it's none of my business, but this makes the whole thing like more airtight for the police. No, I get it. It's okay. Um, actually, I was down at the... Uh at the main meeting a friend for dinner that night, and uh, after that I went home. Okay, great. And uh, and again, I'm sorry, but the police are going to ask, do you, do you have the friend's name and the, maybe like a phone number in case they need to corroborate your whereabouts? I'm sure they won't, but just in case. Sure, no problem. Um, her name is Renee, and uh, I'll spell her last name for you. It's O-L-S-K, but it's pronounced O-L-S-K. Okay, great. Now, now, is there a good contact number for her? Yeah, sure. Hang on a sec. Okay. All right, it's uh, 757-288. 
Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Sorry for the hassle. Like I said, I don't think they're going to do anything with this information. It just makes it easier to cross people off this list. Then we don't have to send all these emails about security protocol and stuff like that. I got you. No problem. Okay, Paul. Thanks. Have a good one. Okay, you too. Okay, so, all right, so, Amy, do we know who this person is, this Renee person? Yeah, yeah, I know who she is, and she's not his friend from college. He lied. He used to work with her, so she got fired, and she used to text him a lot back when we first started dating. Okay, so, now, where do you want to go with this? Do you want us to call her? Maybe she can fill us in on what happened Friday night? Can we do that part off the air? Uh, you know, I mean, if we call her, it has to be on the air. I have to use the, the, the board that we dial out on. That means it has to go on the air. I mean, otherwise, you could do it yourself. But, I mean, if you call her, she's probably going to know something's up. Yeah, go ahead, I guess. Okay. I'll tell you what. Let's call her as soon as we come back. Hello. Uh, good morning. Can I speak to Renee, please? Uh, may I ask who's calling? Uh, this is the Z Morning Zoo radio show. Nick, Jordan, and Shaggy on Z104. Hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, what's going on? Is this Renee? Yes, it okay. is. It's Renee. Renee. Well, hello. Good morning. Um, we've been doing good a morning. segment this morning. The segment we've been doing is basically about women who have been secretly dating men who are married. And like, so anyways, Paul called us and told us about you guys, but he asked that we change everybody's names to stay anonymous. Would you be willing to talk about dating Paul if we changed your name on the air? Wait, so wait, Paul called you? Yeah, he told us you guys have been dating for a while and his wife doesn't know about it. But don't worry, like I said, we change everybody's names when we go on the air. Yeah, no, uh, I don't think so. That's I'm. I'm pretty sure that's not a good idea. Are you sure? I mean, he pretty much told us, like, already that you guys are, like, a thing. Yeah. Uh, like you said, his his wife, you know, she doesn't know. And if she found out, it would probably be, like, a whole huge thing. And I really don't want any drama like that in my life. So, yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't Oh, think you don't want know. any drama? Is that what you thought when you decided you were going to break up someone's marriage? Oh, snap! What? No, no, not at all. And it was nothing like that. He, he asked me if I wanted to like hang out with him, and we just sort of ended up together. But he, he was the one that was, you know, wanting to. So hang you basically out. decided that hanging out with a married man while he's supposed to be at home with his wife was a good idea. Okay. Well, first of all, I didn't decide anything, and second of all. I, you know, I don't know who you are, but I don't appreciate you getting all judgy with me. I mean, <laughs> uh, Amy, I don't think she, Amy, I don't think she knows she's, who she's talking to. Renee, that's Paul's wife. What? Wait, wait, are you? Are we on the air right now? Oh my god. <laughs> Right, so, look, chalk another one up for women's yep. intuition, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Adam um, I, I, I mean, Amy, I guess it looks like you were right. So, You know, that's fine. I hope he's happy giving the house and everything he owns so he can run around with his broke-ass girlfriend who has no job and zero money. I'm sure they'll be real happy together. <laughs>